first of all, welcome in. It's uh, just kind of a crazy thing to be in one of these studio situations making videos like this and having a live audience and making eye contact with you guys, uh, and I absolutely love it. So today we're gonna be talking about a concept that I call from the page to the gig. So the page to the gig concept came from me personally having trouble with being able to do the things that I practiced in the moment. So the gig is not an actual gig, the gig is the moment. The gig could be a gig, and it's one of those moments where you've practiced all these cool fills, all these cool grooves, and when you get on the gig, they just don't show up and you just freeze up and play the same things you've always played. And I remember being a kid and the, the gig for me as a little kid wasn't an actual gig, it was family members coming over. Fam you know, my aunts, my uncles, and my mom, being my mom, the lovely woman that she is, would brag to my entire family about how I was just the greatest drummer to ever live and then the family would come over to see little Mikey J play. And I had all this stuff, like all this stuff I could play. And then when my family would come over, I would go. And I would just, I, I just wanted to cry. And I was like, what the heck just happened? I, Aunt, Aunt Chris, I'm really good, I, I promise. And she's like, oh, it sounds amazing. And I was like, oh. <laughs> I lost it. And Chris is done. That's it. And then Uncle Rich would come over and the same thing would happen. I'd play the same whack beat and I'd be like, oh my God, I'm working out of Future Sounds by David Garibaldi and I'm playing a beat that I learned in second grade. Why is this happening? And so I, I just, and that happened throughout my whole life. And then I started teaching and I started hearing it from my students saying like, hey, all the stuff that you're teaching me, like I love it, but I can only do it in my practice room. And then when I go to band practice, the gig, the moment, I just can't do it. It's like trapped inside me. And I was like, okay. And eventually I overcame it personally, but I didn't know how it happened. Just all of a sudden, if I practice something, it showed up and I could play it in the moment. It took a long time to reverse engineer, like, well, why are the things that I'm practicing showing up for me, but not for my students? And I had to come up with a full concept for that. So what I started thinking is like, well, how did I practice it? I think it's actually the way that I'm practicing that is the difference. It's not a mindset. It's not that I'm putting in more hours. It's the actual way I practice it. So page to the gig, that whole entire concept that we're going to go through tonight is really just about how can I actually make the things that I'm practicing part of my true vocabulary, part of my drumming DNA. So when I sit on the kit, instead of having access to three or four easy to reach things, I have access to everything I've ever practiced. Well, the big thing is you're gonna have to change how you practice. So I have six little ways that we're gonna go through this of how to practice something. So I came up with a little demo pattern for you guys, just so you could hear, just so we all had something to work on. And I think it's something that probably almost everyone here could do uh, if I gave you enough time to practice it. Don't worry, I won't make you come up and play, or I might. Now you can just worry for the rest of this, this little video shoot. Um, so, this is a fairly simple thing, but I'll give you the finished product first. So here's the groove that we're gonna work on tonight. So if I wrote that out as is, that's actually pretty complicated. It's a linear pattern, meaning no two limbs play at the same time. It's got ghost notes, it's got accents. Sometimes I insert diddles, sometimes I don't. It's got a left foot chick. There's a lot to that. And so if you had to learn that, that is 16 individual notes. It's a one bar pattern in 16th notes. And if you learned it as is, I think what happens is it becomes very stale and you don't have command over it. If you went through and said, okay, it's the kick, then it's the hi-hat, then it's the snare, but the snare's a ghost, it's like, Man, that's, that's not a way to really internalize this. Instead, what you need to do is reverse engineer it into a few different steps. So the first thing I would do is I would try to think, what is the pattern? So step one for this concept is pattern. There has to be a pattern there. I think we can all agree that that thing repeats. It's not improvisation. I'm not just jamming, it does repeat, note for note. So what is the pattern? Well, the pattern isn't kicks and snares and ghost notes and hi-hats. The pattern is, bass drum or right foot, right hand, left hand, and left foot. That's the pattern. So in the beginning, I don't even think in terms of kicks and snares or anything. I just try to squash all the notes that are on that page into one line 
and just give them either a K, an R, an L, or an LF, left foot. So the pattern for that one is kick, right, left, kick, right, left, right, left, hat, right, left, kick, right, left, right, left. So that's 16 original notes. Really, it's only eight notes long, kick, right, left, kick, right, left, right, left, but the second time through, I replaced the first bass drum with a left foot hi-hat. So kick, right, left, kick, right, left, right, left, hat, right, left, kick, right, left, right, left. Raise your hand if you think, whilst sitting in those chairs, you could do that hands and knees. I won't call you out individually. Oh, y'all y'all be modest. I think you got this. Let's try it together. So we'll do it really slow, hands and knees just stomping. And if you don't get it right, just do it really quiet and the person next to you probably does get it right and then you can pretend like, I'm crushing this. As long as you have a good face, it'll be great. Just be like, ugh. All right, so we'll do it really slow. About that same speed. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a kick right left kick right left right left hat right left kick right left right kick right left kick right left right left hat right left right left right left hat right left kick right left one more time kick right left kick right left right left hat right left kick right left right left. Did you get an extra kick in? You might. <laughs> you either did or you didn't. There was a kick happening over there. All right. Your goal. It was you? Hey, thanks for being honest, man. Thanks for being honest. So that's the pattern. How on earth could you possibly expect yourself to play this finished product groove if you can't even do the pattern? So what I do, my first step is figuring out the pattern. And then I don't care about speed, I don't care about dynamics, I don't care about moving it even to the drums, I don't even need sticks for this. I just sit in front of the TV and I might be reading it. So I might read it on the page and I'm just waiting to get my eyes off the page up to the TV while it's still happening. So you need to repeat this thing a trillion times. If you have to say to yourself, kick right, left, kick right, left, right, left, hat right, left, kick right, left, right, left, you're not there yet, and that's okay. But I promise every one of you here that can currently play paradiddles, there's no way you're still going right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, right, left, mother, right, left, right, right. Like there's no way. It's just it's on autopilot. If anything, all you're thinking is pulse, pulse, pulse. But in the beginning, I bet you did go right, left, right, right, left. Oh, what comes after that? You know, so this is the same thing. This is just a full body version of that. Kick right, left, kick right, left, right, left, hat right, left, kick right, left, right, left. You need to play that pattern so much. And the big key here is do not try to make it cool. And I know that sounds kind of silly, but I really mean that. Don't make it into something. It's not ready to be something yet. This is just the most basic ingredients of this finished product. So I would just sit on the kit, no metronome. I don't care about time right now. I'll do that later. No ghost notes. I don't care about texture and dynamics. I'll do that later and definitely no speed. I can see that some of you, and I'm not gonna point any fingers, but some of you have long hair. And when you have long hair, you want to rush. You just want to go faster and faster and, oh my God. Um, so, yeah, attaboy. So, in all honesty, like, try not to rush. You, you, we have time. You'll get faster later. That is one of the steps. So for me, I just sit there, and like I said, it's okay to rush. It's okay to drag. I'm just trying to get to the point that the pattern stays intact. And the thing that I just love every time I do this with a pattern is that I know, as soon as I play that, I know the potential's there. Yes, I'm at a point, if I'm just learning this from scratch, I might be at a point where uh, I can't do it, but I can just feel it. It's gonna be something cool. If I just keep doing this, it's gonna be something cool. I just have to trust in the process that eventually that in time will become
So step one to this whole thing is the pattern. And don't worry about sticks or a bass drum pedal. It can be hands and knees. I promise you that is more than enough. All right. The next